there we go. Um, so Satoshi is from Monash University in Malaysia, and he's going to be speaking to us about um, some infrastructure and training um, initiatives that he's got started. So while waiting the slides, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, the organizing committee to be here to invite me to the uh, this one fantastic uh, what you call uh, conference. I also like to thank the Naoto, Shinya, and uh, Graham, and particularly Leon, to bring in to this community, um, which is really brilliant opportunity for me to open up my mind. And then, I've honestly I never heard this um, what you call community or the organization since. So I've been working on imaging the last 17 years. I never have these things, uh, which is available, which is, which is really fantastic. Um, so today, uh, I'd like to talk about our imaging facility, which is in Malaysia, um, Monash, Malaysia. So um, I don't know many of you might not know about this. Uh, Monash, Malaysia, I mean, Monash University is originally essentially Australian university, but Monash has the uh, offshore campus outside of Australia. Um, including Malaysia campus. Actually, Monash used to have the campus in the South Africa once, but uh, some some for reason uh, we shut down. So uh, Malaysian campus, uh, which is based in the KL, uh, we have about 10,000 students and we have about, about 900 staff. Um, and then uh, though uh, you, our campus is quite small, as compared to other public universities in Malaysia. Of course, as compared to the uh, main campus in Clayton, which is relatively small, but we are still a uh, research intensive university, uh, which is, we are private university. We have seven schools, including the uh, school of medicine, which I mean belonging to. So um, because our research intensive research, I mean, as a research intensive university, we have several uh, research infrastructure platform, including the optical imaging platform. Uh, this was uh, originally uh, established as a small microscopy lab or microscopy room uh, in 2006 when I joined Monash as a junior scientist uh, for neuroscience lab. So we say set up the microscopy because as a neuroscientist without microscopy, we can't survive. So we request the university to come up with a couple of microscopy. And then um, we gradually uh, established our facility. And, and then uh, last couple of years, our, the microscopy lab has absorbed as a core facility of the campus. So currently we have only two staff, including myself, um, and then major resource or source of funding is still internal. We don't really rely on the public funds or this is all the money come from the campus. Um, in total, uh, on, on average, our users around 100 users per month. And um, so we have been giving the uh, equipment access to the user internally and externally. We also providing training uh, for the users and we also conducting workshops, and then we also providing technical service to the external users. So this is our brief history. As I mentioned earlier, we have started our lab as a, two, uh, as a small research lab, and then gradually we set up the uh, microscopy because our needs, including confocal microscopy, uh, live imaging, uh, LCMS, uh, sorry, SM. And then uh, a couple of years ago, we managed to introduce our micro, uh, multi photo microscopy. Um, so already more than 17 years since we started this our lab. So our Confoca we purchased in 2006 still working, uh, which is really, I think one of the oldest microscopy in the world. And so uh, we have been requesting university to replace those old, old dinosaurs as soon as possible. Um, but we try to manage to survive as a core facility. So um, how we started, our microscopy room to be shared facility. Uh, I like to share some of our history. Um, initially, we want to make our facility to be a bit more, more larger scale to uh, accommodate more research capability. So we request, of course, the university to get up more funding and more resources. So we provide all justifications why we have to do it. So one of the major uh, question given by the central is, why you need to have this? How many people being uh, benefit beneficial from our facility? 
Um, though our school has seven schools, a majority of uh, users either never use fluorescence microscopy or confocal microscopy, or we have plenty of cancer researchers, but we, they never ever asked me to help the, uh, their microscopy. So, which is very difficult for us to convince the uh, central we need this microscopy. And always they ask, oh, you need a microscopy, but these guys outside of the campus, or oh, the, these people never ask the use of the microscopy. So how can you justify that use of those microscopy for the rest of the campus? So that's always uh, difficult, difficult things, you know, it will be a major challenge for us. So we reconsider our proposal to be more wider scale. If you look at our, our microscopy or the situation in Malaysia, so, I mean, there are multiple microscopy or confocal microscopy in several public universities, but they don't really have the proper concept of the core facility, or they don't really providing service to outside, except for us. So we are the only sort of uh, microscopy group which providing the service, training, and those uh, what they call services. So if we consider us as a node of the microscopy unit, for the, camp, the, the country rather than our university, they may consider, okay, this investment will not only beneficial to us, but also beneficial to the rest of the campus or regionally. So that's how we change our plan and then propose them. So uh, those are good narratives. We have to convince them. Um, so they buy our idea. So, um, and also we have to provide several things, business plan or how we're gonna sustain for long term. Uh, business model and short term, uh, long term research impact. Uh, so we always told the okay number of publication, not only no number of publication, but also quality publication can be further improved by investment. So, but like I said, still we have been suffering lots of the challenges. One is big, of course, so this is uh, maybe common everywhere, limited financial resources because, because we are mainly relying on the internal resources, not the external resources. And lack of capability, currently myself and uh, the uh, tech, tech banker staff uh, in church is only two of us are running the uh, facility. And this is uh, another biggest challenge was that the demand is doesn't match with uh, what we have, what we propose, or uh, what we service, but what they want us to do. Always there is a huge gap, so we have to align with the their demand. And another problem was the research culture, because in Malaysia, unfortunately, currently still major investment is more application science rather than the basic science. So they are more focused on application side. So they don't really need microscopy or they don't really work on the functional biology. They are more focused on application biology. So we have to align and then this majority funding, the national funding goes to those application science rather than fundamental research. So we need to a bit more rely, I mean, to align our strategy to the, the national priority. And um, also from the, what they call the, the, the uh, microscopy company perspective, they don't really uh, considering Malaysia as good market because the number of the confocal or microscopy available in country is very, very few. So from the uh, business perspective, they don't really need to invest so much. So we have to figure out how to convince the, uh, uh, the microscopy company to invest more into this area so that they can, you know, consider to invest more money or they can bring in more opportunity for us to access the facility. I mean, of course we have access to the Australia, but I'm sorry, uh, Singapore, but in the regionally, we have very limited uh, capability capacity. So even local supplier is not really capable to provide a proper service to us. So we have to rely on center, let's say, for example, like uh, Germany, but always there are huge gap between us and main uh, company in uh, Germany in Singapore service center. Um, so what we have been doing to improve our capability, we always encourage our staff, I mean, only one staff, encourage to uh, provide, I mean, attend some workshop, uh, any uh, uh, what call opportunity, try to give, grab the opportunity to get some, um, uh, what you call uh, experience um, with the finance support. 
Um, and then utilize the opportunity for staff development because the university has some um, funding to support the staff for development. Also, we will try to build some a network with a microscopic community in the region. Of course, main campus in Clayton is one of the biggest uh, our resource center. So we have some uh, sort of mutual communication and also have good collaboration with our collaborator in Japan and in Singapore. So whenever we have some students to learn new techniques, we send our students to those area so they can have ability to learn and then bring the techniques they learn into our facility. So we also giving some sort of the education program as including workshop also uh, nurturing program like an outreach program. So we visit the, the international school and provide the uh, opportunity for them to touch our microscopy and then you know have an experience. This is like two uh, images which we conducted two weeks ago in one of the international schools. They are grade five uh, students. They have never had experience in their microscopy. They are very, very excited. So this is something nurturing the future scientists in the country. So I mean, lastly, the future direction, how we can improve the awareness of the importance of bioimaging in the research in regionally. And we also need to formalize the local regional network in bioimaging. So we have scattered researchers, but we don't really have proper form uh, of the network in the region. I also capable of development, innovating, how we can disseminate the technology techniques within the network. That will be our future direction. Um, thank you.